Good morning, pregame crew. How are y'all? It's Wednesday, August 17th, 8.22 a.m. Dang it, I did it again. It's at 22 and I got to say all these 22s. Kidding. Okay, I, I delayed. Now I can say 23. It's 8.23 a.m. Eastern, 6.23 a.m. Mountain Time. Good morning. Welcome to the pregame show. How y'all doing? Everybody good out there? Let me say hi to my friends. Audiovisual check, please. Luciano. Hi, Greg. BBB. Why, sure. Ricky. Rick. Jake. Sam. RJ Robinson. Well, good. I'm glad you liked it. Are you yelling at me? Kidding. We'll look at yell. I like that trucking company. They had a big move um, earlier in the year, I believe, and then it really pulled back. Hey, Lisa. Sal. Oh, my Tammy. I do care a ton, and I'm glad you could see it. Hey, Andre, Night Truck. You're welcome, ER. Hey, Casey. Casey and Nola. Basque. I'm so glad you were there. Hey, Ann, Mal, Night Truck, Mary, Johnny, Sam, Carlos. Story today. I love you. <laughs> You're done. Hi, Carlos, Mary. Johnny, Sam, James, Miguel, Sharon. Perfect. Thanks, ER. Appreciate it. All right. Now let me go back up here. BBBY is hurting some shorts, but it looks like it was pausing this morning when I was looking at it. 2860. We have key res or clear resistance. Let me say that. Clear resistance at $28 and $28.60. We're popping in the pre-market. Uh, was it Cohen? I'm trying to think of who it was. Uh, that was on CNBC this morning that was saying that they anticipated BBBY to go to $80. So just know that there's lots of stories, obviously hype, Reddit, and shorts on this, but how many shorts have covered already as part of this squeeze? It's been going on for a while. How many have already covered? And how many are left to cover? There's hardly any way to know that. So just trade price action and Dan said it well yesterday, just wait for those tightening patterns to develop and then you can really manage your risk because if you're playing within a tightening pattern, your stop should be close by. If you're wrong, you get stopped out quickly. If you're right, just keep moving up your stop. So BBBY, support here in the pre-market, $24.50, $24. You have a after a pre-market resistance of $27.64 and then we have the $28 and then the $28.60. And this is what bears are doing. Tell me when price gets near $27.89. And then if it doesn't stop there, if there's no pause there, tell me when it gets to $28.50. Just in that general area right before it approaches. All right, EL. Where was that run? That run was back here. This is the one I was thinking about here. That was last year. Man, it's been a while. I had that great run. We have a gap below now. This is a trucking company. We have a daily inside bar from yesterday. Resistance 731. Support 703. Uh, if you are a experienced commodities trader, you may want to look at a nat gas short. It's approaching and it's very, very high risk against the high of the morning. We're bouncing here. 975 is the resistance, but I wouldn't use that as, a, as my stop. I would use 954, 955. But it's bouncing here into an area of resistance, and it's had a very, very strong overnight. So again, caution. Nat gas is up overnight. Only 1.7%, but it bounced pretty hard yesterday, too. All right, getting back to Yell. Ugh. The 697 is the support, of course, 703 from yesterday, but at that level, I'd call that a double bottom and resistance 731. Your next support below that is not until, well, 685 and then 649. Looks like bulls are just taking a breather here, but I don't see an entry for myself. This would bother me. Not all gaps have to be filled, but this would bother me, this big gap below, assuming it could act as a magnet. Man, NG's really popping. Never mind, it's through that resistance. These little nat gas bulls, this time of morning, I see them do it all the time. They can just run it on very little volume. If this keeps up closer to 975, I'll be looking at a, a counter trend short. Drinking some water real quick. All right. The roll. A, D, 
A. We have two minutes until I get started with indices, commodities, crypto, and movers and shakers of the day. We're inside last week's range, and on the daily, we are a, we are threatening to lose the daily eight EMA. We have a long upper wick of profit taking on this candle. We've lost the four hour clear pivot. Wait, did we lose it or did I just eyeball that wrong? Yeah, we lost it. On the hourly, we're not oversold yet. We have enough room for a daily high or low. So bulls are looking for bottom fish compared to 0.5209. But I would be a more comfortable bear on this chart looking for a bounce and top fishing an hourly low or high. Yep, did. Hey, Roger. Bonjour. Hey, Bobo. Yep, Casey, that congratulations, but yes, that's a FOMO trade and those will have a lower probability of working out over time. You want to take higher probability rates. Nola's hot fire right now. Well, let me tell you, it's 63 here right now, but the high today is 104. So Yep, FOMC minutes. Now, FOMC minutes today, not the actual meeting. So minutes can go either way. They can be super volatile or super boring. Hey, Roger. Roger, you're a member, right? PCG? Uh, let me go to my Twitter. Okay, Roger, this should take care of it. If it doesn't, let me know in chat, okay? All right, it's 8.30, let's get started. Hey, Amit. Uh, chartguys.com, chartguys.com. Well, look at BBY. BBBY, it's getting a little frisky already. That made me, I don't know why that made me choke on my water. <laughs> that was quick. That, that moved, escalated quickly. Wow. Double top right now at 28.59 and 28.60. Yeah, Roger, message me in our TCG Slack chat room and I'll get you taken care of, okay? All right, let's get started. I'm a little slower this morning. I think the webinar kind of wiped me out. That was... It's a whole lot of energy to get that going, but it was a lot of fun. And thank you for those that joined me. Okay, here is who I am. I'm Chark Al Lurie. I'm part of the Chark Guys community. We teach technical analysis. If you want to give me a follow on Twitter at Chark Al Lurie, I'd greatly appreciate it. What I do here every morning is I have these notes that I share with TCG members after the fact, but I just use these notes to help me stay organized. We must have just had some data. Oh, it was retail sales, I believe, that we just had. Getting a little spike from that. And then we have FOMC meetings today. Minute meeting, meeting minutes today at 2 p.m. Gosh, it's going to be one of those morning shows, I guess so. So hang sync. You know what? I'm just going to show you the minutes today. I'm just over trying to lay them down. So we have FOMC minutes today at 2 p.m. Eastern. Hourly backburners are the name of the game today and how the bulls do or don't buy the dip. Hang Sing was slightly green last night. DAX was slightly red last time I looked at it. Let's go look at it right now. Yep, well down 1% actually. That's a little more significant. So I don't think we can ascertain anything from that information. So I get questions a lot on patterns and I thought it would be important or it may be helpful to go over this a pattern importance and how we rank them. Which pattern trumps the other pattern? Because 
often I'll say we have a potential two minute head and shoulders, but I see that often where you'll have a potential two minute head and shoulders, but a five minute bull flag. The five minute bull flag is more important than the two minute head and shoulders. So let's just go through this exercise. If spy, <laughs> the sacred notes, you're cute. Um, if spy has a cup and handle on the weekly, bull flag on the daily, head and shoulders on four hour, and so on. Which pattern is the most important? It's always going to be the higher time frame. Whatever patterns on a higher time frame, that is the most important pattern. But what's more important here on SPY out of these one, two, three, four, five, six patterns, what's the most, most important thing about that particular chart? If this is, of course, just hypothetical, what's the most important thing? None of them. What the most important thing is, is price action. Price action, it was a trick question, is greater than any pattern that you put out there. Price action is way more important. Price action is more important than EMAs and FIBS and RSI and yada, yada, yada. All right, price action is more important than patterns. I get asked two things every single day. What indicators do you use? By the way, if you're interested in my chart setup, you can click on the link below in the video description to receive a PDF explanation. And we have a YouTube video on how to set up your chart like Dan or Lori. Okay, so here are the two questions. I get every day. What indicators do you use? This means in the chat room, I get the questions on Twitter, on YouTube, everywhere. Is this a blank? Is this a diamond bearish reversal pattern? Is this a cup and handle? Is this a blah, 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 blah? These are the least important items on your chart. What indicators you have and what patterns you have. They are the least important. They're an extra edge, obviously, or why would we even bother calling them out? They're extra edge, but they are not the, the most important thing on your chart. The most important thing is price action. So newer traders focus on these two questions. Indicators looking for that holy grail and pattern identification. It's really important to get your indicators done and established and you're comfortable with them. And it's really important for you to be able to do pattern recognition. But what's most important is probabilities. And how can we identify probabilities? Through price action. So I just want you to always keep the ranking things of importance and price action at the top and don't get it twisted being all about price action. Yesterday, if you were part of the TCG chat room, I posted at the end of the day, look at this beautiful diamond bearish reversal pattern. Just totally classic here. But that's not a reason alone to take a short. It isn't. You got a double top right there at 4314 or 4315. It went on too long. That's too drawn out actually to say it's a confirmed bear pattern. It, but it did eventually break bear. The most important thing is the double top. The double top is way more important than the diamond pattern. All right, so just parties, parties, parties. <laughs> Husby's question. My hubby, he actually, <coughs> he cooks too. So I don't always have to worry about what's for dinner. All right, looking at ES, I'll have to draw my lines again since I scribbled on it. What's new? 4315 is your resistance on any bounce. And then on any bounce, the question is, Will it be a bear flag or will it be an EQ? The size of the retrace will tell us that. But regardless, in both of these scenarios, we are looking for a lower high on the hourly compared to 4315. So we see that. So on the four hour, we have made a lower low. We have made a lower low. Typically when that's done, your weekly high is in. So this weekly high is most likely in. Now we have economic data on the plate today. So that could definitely trump all of this action and reverse it completely. But we do have four hour lower high and we haven't had one of those 
since August 10th. So in a whole week, we haven't had a four hour lower low. So that sets the tone differently for the day. And on any bounce, we're looking for hourly lower highs. And here is what I'm watching for my first trade of the day. I am watching for hourly oversold. How do I define price action, Baird? How I define pr price action is higher highs, higher lows, lower highs, lower lows. It's going to be the trend. And I have said before, if you've been on the pregame show before, if you have resistance up here and support down here and price is approaching from the bottom, this is price action, the resistance. And if you're approaching from the top, you can, uh, excuse me, from the bottom, you can short. If you're approaching from the top, you can go long. But I, I worked with a mentor and she only, only had price on her chart. She had nothing else, not one other thing. And price was a line. It wasn't even candles. Because she, her contention was RSI, relative strength ind index. Do you need RSI? to show that price is strong here? No. Relative strength index, this chart is strong. Price is strong. So if RSI is low, do you need RSI to tell you that the chart is weak? No, we can see here, lower lows, we can see it. And she made her candles align, which you can do that by clicking here. She made it align and she got rid of every indicator, squeeze, volume, everything, got rid of it all. So if you're struggling with trading, maybe you can break things down and make it more simple. It's somewhat counterintuitive in trading. If you want to trade better, put less indicators on your chart and look at less charts. You'll see me here. I used to have five over here. I've been going down to four and even three by the time market opens. Look at less indicators and look at less charts if you want to change your trading. All right. Hourly oversold will be where I will be looking for the daily higher low to be put in because we have plenty of room for daily higher low on ES. And that first hourly oversold may mark it. It may not, it may not make, it may not mark the bottom. And that is a sign of something bigger, i.e. bears stepping in. Let me make sure I give you those levels. Resistance 4315 and your next support 4249. Look at that diamond pattern right there. That resolved very beautifully. We got a lower low at 1350575. Your next support is 13495. And on any bounce, we're not oversold by the way yet. On any bounce, is it a bear flag or, or, or are the bulls buying the dip in such a way to make room for a higher low? That will tell us whether or not we should or should not get further bull continuation or are we tagging in the bears this time. All right, RTY, we lost that low of 2003. Your next support is 2000 psychological and 1995. Man, I'm thirsty today. And then resistance 2028. On any bounce, you're looking for an hourly lower high and you're not oversold yet. Oh, skip the YM. YM? We're not hourly oversold yet. On any bounce, we're looking for hourly lower high. Your next support, 33786, resistance 34177. So on VIX, I think I put in my notes, we, we're going to have a showdown today. Four hour lower high anticipated on VIX is going to be an absolute showdown. In my opinion, FOMC minutes will most likely be the break catalyst. I forgot the. The break catalyst let me show you what i mean on vix we had this rectangle here yesterday or excuse me monday this box up here yesterday now the question is will we set that lower high today or or will we get a higher high and bears really step into this market. VIX is volatility, and volatility is a gauge of fear and FOMO. We have just been melting out this fear, and it's just show, shown that FOMO has entered the market. On VIX, your key resistance 2116, support 1950. If a wick is part of a candle, not a close below, why is that a break of a level? A wick is where price action went off, period. 
So if if you have uh, probably not the best chart. I'll see if I can provide an example for you, Paul. But if something wicks into an area, that's where bears found it, said, okay, it's a probe of liquidity into supply overhead. Bear stop Bitcoin right here at 24448. So now 24448 is a level. And if we break it here on the next bounce, that would be a four hour higher high. That is a key level. The candle it sh shows where the most volume went off and they, but the wicks are still important nonetheless. It's, it will mark an area where the bears or the bulls were able to turn price around. And here, this is where the bears were, were able to take back over this candle and push it back down. All right, on Bitcoin. Let's read Dan's notes on Bitcoin. How about that? Bitcoin bears ha have trying to confirm a 12 hour head and shoulders after the overnight bull move was erased effortless, effortlessly with one hour candle new resistance at that 24 five. So everybody and their brother, sister, mother, and their aunt that kind of knows about trading is talking about this rising wedge we got going on. That's terrible lines on daily on Bitcoin. So just know that that's hovering over any bull's head because if you're in the crypto market at all, any Furu, Twitter Furu or whatever, financial guru you're following, they've mentioned this rising wedge. So it could be making bulls a little jumpy out there. So in my opinion, bears have the upper hand up here. They definitely have it on the four hour and they have it on the hourly. Okay, Paul, I'm sorry. My words, I'm just not explaining things like I want this morning. And again, I'm just going to blame it all on that I left all my brain cells at the webinar yesterday. All right. Ethereum. Ethereum had a beautiful spike up, got that four hour higher high, only to be smacked down by the bears. We do have a double bottom at 1852.88 and 1852.85. Ethereum bulls would love for this double bottom to hold and have another push up, but ultimately a four hour lower high would be anticipated compared to that 1957 on any push up. But I would say that the bulls are still in a very precarious situation down here below the EMAs on the four hour, RSI is below 50, and bears are squeezing it to the downside. All right, let's look at my beloved commodities. My beloved commodities, gold. Gold has been super weak, 1779. So it's a double bottom with this level over here, 1780. 1770 is your next support. And I told you I was watching four hour oversold conditions for gold, but now it's just consolidating more in time than in price and RSI. Yes, the bears have been able to make a little headway, but I wouldn't say, is it a falling wedge? No. Because when you get these little lower lows without a lot of follow through, sometimes you can zoom out and find a falling wedge. Let me just make sure we don't have one on the two hour. No, we don't. So 1770 is that key support. And on the hourly oversold is not important anymore because we already got that bounce and it didn't set that low. We're still drifting down. So now four hour oversold would we be above 1770 then? Yes, is now at 1773. And that's where I would be looking to possibly make an entry on gold. All right. Oil. Dan has been pointing out the falling wedge action. We're making these lower lows without a lot of follow through. We did it again yesterday on oil. We have inventory today at 1030 Eastern. Please don't forget about that. So on the hourly, we have a little bit of an EQ sideways here. It's still in a downtrend, but we are kind of drifting sideways, most likely just waiting for these uh, inventory numbers. Next support, 86.08, then 85.88. Resistance is up at 86.72 and 87.53. Nat gas, what a bull. Bulls, 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 girls, girls, girls. So. On the weekly, we are very, very close to confirming this cup and handle. Very close. So 975 is the number on the continuous contract. And we hit 9677 this morning. 
So if I were to top fish this, it would be counter trend because this is a bullish chart. I would just be looking for a scalp. We have Nat Gas inventory tomorrow at 1030 Eastern. We have resistance that high of this morning so far, 9677 and support at 931. Oil, excuse me, Nat Gas bulls are in control as long as these hourly EMAs are below price. Same Luciana, I try to avoid whatever commodities having some type of uh, inventory, nat gas tomorrow, oil today, because those are binary events that I don't want to have to deal with. So I've been pounding the table how many days? I know for sure I started here, maybe here and here. As long as Apple EMAs are below us, bulls are large and in charge, don't try to short the market. Well, Things are changing. We're below the hourly EMAs. We are not below the hourly 50 MA to note, but this size of a pullback, it benefits the bears because on the next bounce, bears will be looking for a lower high top fish on Apple against 17409. So that is a setup today because I go over these four names every day, but I wouldn't say that's my primo setup is an Apple short, not by, by a mile. Amazon, this is a better short because you see how it wasn't, didn't have as much um, mojo, I guess you would say. It didn't have as much get up and go as Apple did. And then we did get a good push yesterday. They, they were doing a little bit of a gamma squeeze buying out of the uh, money calls expiring this Friday. And then it created a little pop. But I think a top fish against yesterday's high on Amazon makes sense. Hey, Stacks, how are you? So I did not change this chart from yesterday's drawing. We were talking about it last week. On August 10th, a week ago today, we started talking about the potential for daily head and shoulders. Yesterday I drew this and I haven't changed it. You think the bears used my line to short it? Just kidding. It was a perfect double top at 191.42 and 191.64. This is a much higher quality, better probability setup, in my opinion, from my experience on NVIDIA, on a bounce looking to short against the high of day yesterday. And 15 minute, you do have a small little level in here for aggressive bears, 189.49. I don't see with current market weakness, us pushing up to that 189.49 to get that clean of a top fish level. So then you would just have to work with whatever fishing pole it gives us, if it gives us a stair step, an EQ, and then look to top fish that lower high. Tesla. And just so everyone here knows, I give about eight setups a day. Well, I'll go over the four charts that I go over every day, Apple, Amazon, NVIDIA, and Tesla, and then I go over four additional setups. The probability that all eight setups work out as I am envisioning it are very low. So we just have to go with probabilities here. So I'm not saying that that NVIDIA setup would would work, but it's definitely one of my higher conviction trade setups for the day. Tesla, what did I say about Tesla? 12 hour cup and handle on the table. This one was a little hard for me because on the hourly, we're looking for a potential lower high compared to 93445, but look at this chart. That's purdy. Look at that, that's beautiful. So uh, Tesla announced that they are opening up their chargers to non-Tesla vehicles, which is horrific because Tesla chargers are all, superchargers are full everywhere already with Tesla cars. So that's going to kind of stink. But that is negative for names like Blink, ChargePoint. So they may be shorts today. When I looked at the charts, I couldn't add it to my Queen of the Mountain setups because a lot of them look like uh, daily bull flags, but just something to know. All right, uh, so Tesla potential 12 hour cup and handle. I would be looking bullish on Tesla today on market bounce, but I wouldn't say bullish plays are what I'm looking for today with market weakness. All right, my last name down. Oh, put a last name down. All right, GS. So we have a potential, it's kind of messy, head and shoulders here on Goldman Sachs. We've lost the hourly 50 MA. So I'm looking for a top fish. I think I went on the 15 minute here. here. Yeah, 355.36. 
So I would look for a top fish on GS on a bounce against 35536 ILMN. They had a pretty yucky reaction to earnings. And this is not a classic diamond pattern. But that's a diamond if I've ever seen one. Closed yesterday with a daily inside bar. If you look, it had a pretty bad reaction to earnings and then bounced and recovered. Bulls have used a lot of power on this bounce. Top fishing 22190 makes sense. LLY. So on Lily, top fish set up against yesterday's high. Daily lower high is the most likely scenario. So if we go look at it at the chart, so we have a daily inside bar. We're inside Monday's range. We're trapped below the 21 EMA and daily 50 EMA. This is a much weaker chart compared to most. So I'm looking for a top fish against yesterday's high, 314.37. All right, the other name I wanted to talk about, Zim. So Zim is down 4%. They've increased their dividend yield to 30% this morning. Per the news, please verify on your own. It says 58% here. God knows what it is. But they did say that they were raising the dividend this morning and they've crushed on earnings. They crushed on EPS and on Rev as well. Yet they're still down, most likely due to the dividend yield being raised. And it could be to, to guidance or because of guidance. I didn't see that though. So please investigate. But if you're a dividend person, you may want to check out Zim. I would love to buy it closer to $45. We'll see. Okay, I'm just working my way up from the bottom, y'all, because it's just too many questions. I'll do what I can. Dan will be live in our room in six minutes. You're welcome, Mighty Pawns. Thank you for the kind words. BNB. I'll take just a couple of requests. Pretty bullish chart. Looks better than Bitcoin and Ethereum at the moment. Potential weekly bull flag over the EMAs. This is constructive at the moment. Now let me, four hour, okay. Four hour downtrend, that daily high is most likely set. So how the bulls respond here is super important. Your low overnight is a double bottom with this level. Okay, I can, why do people allow me to draw? Take my crayon from me, folks. 308, 20, 80 double bottom right here. Your next resistance on the four hour is up at 324. I saw snow earlier emit, so I'll get to you. I already went over Amazon. You can rewind it. Snow, we have a daily downtrend. We have earnings coming up. Next week, how did they do on their last earnings? Eh, no big deal. This earnings, they hated it, the investors. So growth names look pretty toppy to me. I would look to short 16749 on snow if it were me, if I were trading it. Uh, I don't like the options. I've stopped trading snow because the spreads are too wide. I haven't looked at it in a while. Maybe I should go look at it again. But I do like a top fish against 16749. Then ATAI. That's healthy. Hmm. When you see this, these little clusters of price action here, it just starts getting that compression going. And you want to look for areas of compression. They typically, not always, but typically have really good follow through, whether it be to the upside or downside. So I like that pattern. You can really see it on the four hour. And the hourly, look how it's just so contained. Obviously, there's a shelf of supply up here at 480, and we've got buyers saying, bring it down to the 440s, and we're going to keep buying it. So who depletes the supply faster is who wins. Isn't that interesting? I, I love trading. Well, let me keep it boxed. No, that'll be too good. So you have these blocks of supply up here and blocks of supply down here, and this is the bank for the buyer saying, this is how much I have in the bank to buy. And then every time the price comes down here and they keep using up their stash, they're gonna run out of money to buy. Same thing with the sellers. They have a limited amount of funds to be able to sell into 480. And once that gets taken out, 
then the bulls can proceed. So I have no prediction on this price action. I'm just saying it's a nice contained compressed area that should have nice follow through. All right, that's it for me. Thank you for being here. <laughs> oh gosh. Y'all use stop losses and hit the like button. Give me a follow on Twitter at Charcal Lurie. All right. Y'all in the room, TCGers.